telah bergabung bersama kita narasumber kita hari ini Ibu Yunisari dari UX Indonesia yang nanti akan memberikan kuliah umum dengan judul Machine Learning and Generative AI in Education. Webinar ini merupakan satu dari rangkaian kuliah umum yang diselenggarakan dalam mata kuliah bernama Cipta Karsa yang wajib diambil oleh setiap mahasiswa Universitas Pertamina. Untuk mahasiswa, saya perlu mengingatkan bahwa akan ada kuis setelah webinar hari ini selesai yang akan dibuka di situs e-learning Universitas Pertamina dengan deadline satu minggu. Materi kuis tersebut diambil dari apa yang disampaikan di webinar hari ini, sehingga mahasiswa sekalian perlu menyimak baik-baik webinar ini. Kami ingin memperkenalkan siapa narasumber kita hari ini. Bu Yunis ini kami undang atas perannya sebagai CEO di UX Indonesia. Beliau adalah CEO di UX Indonesia dan juga co-founder UX Indonesia. Bentar. Oke, okay. uh, UX Indonesia ini adalah sebuah perusahaan konsultan dan training yang bergerak di bidang human and computer interaction. Meskipun uh, sebenarnya Bu Yunis ini sudah melanglang buana di dunia industri, bahkan saat ini sebenarnya Bu Yunis juga uh, memiliki sebuah posisi di Google Australia Maka sebagai. Saya minta maaf sebentar. Iya. Yeah. Uh, saat ini Bu Yunis juga memiliki uh, jabatan di Google uh, Australia sebagai Head of GDG Perch Community di dunia akademik. Bu Yunis uh, ini menyelesaikan S1 di Satya Wacana. Betul ya Bu ya? S2-nya saya ingatnya di Denmark dan S3-nya di Australia. Cuma saya nggak saya ingat universitasnya apa. Uh, karya beliau di dunia akademik juga cukup banyak. Ada puluhan... Uh, puluhan karya beliau yang diterbitkan sebagai uh, sebagai uh, jurnal uh, dari sebuah conference ada beberapa jurnal yang juga diterbitkan dalam bentuk jurnal uh, dan dan beliau sudah uh, su sudah memiliki gelar gelar doktor dari Australia ini sejak tahun 2012 begitu Uh, sebenarnya saya sendiri masih masih tidak uh, memahami UX itu apa saja yang dibahas. Mungkin nanti kita akan uh, belajar banyak dari Bu Yunis. Uh, pem, uh, sekian mungkin pembukaan dari saya. Selanjutnya saya serahkan kepada Bu Yunis untuk memulai uh, paparannya. Silakan Bu. Oke, okay, terima kasih Pak Rangga untuk kesempatan yang diberikan dan untuk perkenalannya. Uh, perkenal, uh, perkenankan mungkin uh, saya boleh tanya dulu di sini, um, if I can speak in English? Boleh, Bu. Tidak masalah. Oh, oke. Okay. Yeah, because there, there might be some people joining us today. Uh, they are speaking English, but I'm not so sure if you uh, speak English. Uh, you don't speak Bahasa Indonesia. Can you please um, message me? Because I would just want to make sure that everybody uh, understand what we are uh, discussing today here. Is there anyone here speaking uh, English? Maybe you just write your name on the uh, meeting chat. Because I could uh, see a couple of people, but they have, they have to leave because they did not speak English. Because this is like at the event today, like it's part of the Google uh, Development Group event as well in Perth, so I'm not so sure if there are anyone here coming. There are a couple of people coming today, but anyway, well, um, mungkin saya, uh, saya sudah cek, uh, ternyata sudah pada, apa namanya, mungkin tadi dimulainya dengan bahasa Indonesia, uh, that's okay, We, jadi kita bahasa Indonesia aja sekarang ganti ya, okay, oh, I, oh, okay, Um, ya. Yeah. Jadi um, mungkin maybe I'll just introduce myself um, a little bit. Kalau nanti misalnya ada yang kurang jelas, mungkin bisa di 
tanyakan dalam bahasa Indonesia atau bahasa Inggris. Maybe I'll just for 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 a safe purpose, like I'll just speak in English. So thank you everyone for the opportunity to um, talk uh, today about the topic of uh, machine learning and AI in education. So my name is Yunisari, and thank you Paranga for introducing me today. Um, just want to share a bit of my slide. Uh, yeah, so I'm based in Australia and I'm an academic as well as working in the industry as well. So I'm like a, I'm quite fortunate to be able to work in both um, worlds. And that actually give me some like uh, insights, um, what is going on in the academic world and what is going on in the industry. And, and if you have a chance like uh, to have this opportunity like that, uh, I think I would uh, support you to use that because it is beneficial for all of you or all, uh, it is it's going to be beneficial for everybody. So I'm not going to introduce myself further because uh, Pak Ranga has introduced me, but uh, maybe a little bit about UX Indonesia and customer experience inside. So we are both uh, companies uh, helping uh, other organizations, helping universities, helping um, communities, helping government, helping non-government, helping small a company like a corporate as well. So basically we are helping them to look at their business process, to look at their products, their services. Um, we're focusing on the digital products and services, but we are also uh, looking at the non-digital product and services as well. So for example, if we create an app, so we are looking at how this app is being used uh, by different kind of people, how uh, we can improve the sales, how we can actually also improve the performance of the apps that we are developing. So basically it's end-to-end -end process. Um, we design and develop, and that's what, we, what makes us um, a bit unique. Uh, we are not just making the Figma prototype, but we are, helping the business to accelerate um, in their digital transformation. So maybe uh, if you have more questions, you are welcome to like ask me, type your questions on the chat, or you can also like contact me directly on LinkedIn or send me an email. So this is more or less like what, I'm, what, uh, what our teams uh, have been doing like uh, we go to school we go to the beach we go to the market we go we work with the business small business we work with in the hospital um, we try to understand the users and then like uh, how this user can help us to understand what is their what their challenges are and how to improve uh, their products their sales and um, their services. So it will be like, a, because we are helping business, it will be like profitable or it will, if it is non-profit, it will help the non-profit to um, achieve the purpose that they have. So um, yeah, so before we continue, I would like to have a spend about a minute uh, for you to write down on the chat forum anything about AI. You can write down your question about AI. You can write down um, any idea that you have about AI. But yeah, please write down an anything on the chat forum. Can you please do that now? Uh, I'm going to wait and check it out. Thank you, Paranka. Yeah, can you please write down everyone? Silakan ditulis ya. Could I help better you? Thank you, Nesha. 
Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay. Great. Can you all write down? Yes. Very good. Any question? Don't be shy. Can you please write down? Very good. Thank you so much. Um, what I learned from you here, there are two, um, there are a couple of key ideas that you have in your mind from what I gathered from from what I gather in your in the chat forum. Like uh, you are looking at AI and machine learning are such kind of like a new future, like a new technology that can actually help, but maybe uh, there are some negative things uh, that you may be afraid or fear that it will replace you, it will make you lonelier. And that's very interesting, that's very normal. But also like um, you are looking at the idea of uh, how AI actually can make you uh, improve your your life uh, the possibility of using ai in a uh, different aspect of everyday life so thank you so much for sharing so now it's my uh, my turn i'm going to uh, but please write down any question as we go on the chat forum and i believe that the moderator will look after the chat forum and we are going to have the discussion later. So we are going to talk about the fundamental understanding of AI and machine learning and AI usage in education, humanity-centered design and scenarios of AI in education today. It's going to be like a fundamental uh, discussion. There won't be uh, uh, any coding or anything. Uh, so please feel free to uh, add or um, add additional question if you want to. So when we talk about AI, we are talking about the, the ability of machine, right? This is machine ability to perform cognitive performance similar to human intelligence. Basically, what happened is um, um, the machine is usually like a, just try to help us to do things better, right? Uh, to do things faster, more efficient. But when we talk about AI, we are talking to put some intelligence into the machine. So what can we do? It can be from low level things like put things together, automate a lot of stuff, but it can also be something that is more advanced than that. The, there is a mathematician, he's from England and his name is Alan Turing. He's very famous. He said that machine could perform function faster than humans. He said that, um, well, very long time ago, during his lifetime. And then in 1970, a calculator was invented. And in 2016, 89% US household have it. And now the ability of the calculator is like an exascale threshold, which means that it actually uh, can do more things that human can can do right so that is really sometimes it's a bit scary for many people like if we make ai more and more um clever like what is going to happen like uh, will we be replaced what is going to happen so even now like uh, if you look at this uh, person she is not a human she's a robot but she looks like real right she um 
see Sophia, the world first robot citizen and the first robot innovation ambassador for the United Nations Development Program. So you can check it her check her out. So actually, she has become a citizen. So you can imagine like uh, all the story, the futuristic story that you have you seen on the movie. It may happen, uh, but it it has happened actually. Like uh, now that people have created something that mimicking the human brain and even much more clever than that. So when we talk about AI synonymously, uh, synchronously often, we talk about machine learning, right? AI is the machine who can think like a human, right? That's the first uh, fact that you have to know, okay? But what about machine learning? Machine learning is subset. It's a part of AI based on the algorithm that are trained to detect pattern, make prediction and recommendation, and automate tasks. So this is uh, machine learning, actually, the most common form of AI that makes, uh, that use most of AI. Right now, it's like most of AI now is using machine learning. So we can talk more about uh, machine learning. There are three functions of machine learning. The first one is the descriptive. So the descriptive means the system use data to explain what happened. So there are so many data, right, basically. And in this data is, um, is designed as a model. So you make a model based on this data. And based on this model, you make you describe something that if you receive a new information, you look at the model. Okay, well, this is an apple, something like that. Or predictive. Predictive can mean like uh, you got the data and the system, the model uses the data to predict what will happen. And the prescriptive is like a recept, right? Like a prescription. So this data will give you situation what action you need to take. Okay, we set up based on the previous data, we have known that this, 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 this is kind of um, danger situation. So the prescription with this uh, AI machine learning here, like uh, then you have to do this action A, B, C, D. So that's called prescriptive. And uh, the model, like we are talking about the model because the function, there are three functions. These three functions work based on the model, right? There are three kinds of function. The basic function is supervised, unsupervised, and reinforced, reinforcement, right? So the supervised is like the model is trained with labeled data set, which allows the model to grow, to learn and grow more accurate over time. It can be categorized as regression and classification. So if you look at here, just hold a second. You look here, there is um that there, there are a lot of data that you collected here. Like you have different kind of data, and that this data is labeled, right? Okay, and uh, the machine actually have label something, right? There are four labels, rectangle, circle, triangle, and hexagon. And all this one go into machine, right? And there's a model. The model actually differentiate, like, okay, if this kind of thing is in form of this, it is called a triangle. And if it is like an in form of circle, it's called circle, right? So this is called supervised data. And this type of supervised data is called a type of data. The model is uh, the model is supervised still. This is talking about the number of years experience, the trends, right? It, this is called regression. So under supervised, you can find two kinds of um, categorization. The next one, we can have semi-supervised, which means 
the labels only label two items here, orange and banana. But the input data, the input data is a data that you can get from external sources. It can be in the form of these red things. We don't know what it is. And then uh, we can have uh, this kind of uh, form like this that looks like orange and form like this that looks like banana. So what happened? The machine will make a prediction. Oh, with this kind of red form, um, a bit round like this with a with a uh, with a leaf, it is called apple, right? So this is semi-supervised uh, learning. What what it, what is this? Uh, the what does it mean by unsupervised? So in unsupervised. It, the data will find all the information, the, the machine will find all information from different resources. There is no label. It can be from the social media. It can be from uh, the, the survey. It can be from anything, right? And then it is categorized. The machine does not have the label that, oh, this is the circle. This is the triangle, hexagon, or whatever it is. No. So the machine is trained, so it can cluster similar data. It can make dimensional, dimensionality reduction or association. Oh, this looks like this. So this might be this. Uh, so that's called uh, super, unsupervised learning. And then the last one is the, um, sorry, the picture is not yet changed, but this model is the, uh, actually machine learning does not have any label or anything. So basically this machine or this algorithm is trained through trial and error to take the best action by establishing a reward system. So if they do this, like a, uh, say for example, you are talking about a game, right? Uh, when, you, when the tendency of the system is doing this, 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 then it will be categorized as A. If the system, and this is good, if the system doing B, 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 it will be categorized as B, which is considered not good. So it is like a, also happen in the autonomous vehicle as well. Like a, in the car where the car has no driver, um, if the car stop, when there is this situation, every time there is, certain situation there's a car in front of them and it, the car is slowing down and stop so it is called reinforcement so when the car doing something in the trial and error they are doing something um, repeatedly you reinforce them by giving a reward yes this is good yes this is bad after sometimes the car or the game will learn okay this is good this is not good so this is called like this model called reinforcement. So depending on what you, we don't have to discuss about this, but basically what you, you need to decide, uh, what do you want your system, your AI system machine learning do, right? Do you want to have a natural data? You want to get all this information from different resources, maybe you should go to unsupervised learning. But if you want to have, um, to, to want to have a different situation, but it will be active, then you probably go to reinforcement, but it will be passive. You only like a work on a specific set of data, then it is like a passive system. Then you probably want to go to supervised learning. So we can discuss more on the other occasion, but basically, uh, you can actually learn more about this. Uh, if you go to Google, uh, Crash Cross about machine learning uh, with TensorFlow APIs, you want to know how does the machine learning work, what features, real world case study, hands-on practice exercise, and many more. Now, we are talking about education, right? Uh, when we talk about education, 
university, for example, we are talking about learning. We are talking about problem solving. We are talking about reasoning, decision making, and many more. It's basically, um, this is where the AI will be used because we have to deal with day-to-day -day learning process. We have to make decision, whether you are an administration staff, whether you are an academic staff, whether you are a student, researcher, this is what you will do every day. So basically with this, um, with this AI, we would be able to uh, get an insight. Uh, did we get, first we get the data, right? We got a lot of data. We got, we need a lot of data. We get a lot of data using machine learning process, uh, model. We will find patterns and we will get insight. All of this information are the reason need to be the reason why we use AI solving the problem. We do not apply AI expensive tool, expensive process just because everybody is doing it. If your university doesn't think that it is something that you have to do, then you don't do. But if you think this is something that you will benefit you, then do it. Right. So that's basically how it works. With this machine learning, AI, basically there are so much benefit, right? The benefits you will have like a dropout rate will be re reduced. You get more inclusivity. You, the, the business of the university will get more profitability. Uh, the student will have much more opportunity to have personal learning experience. And it will uh, subsequently improve the learning outcomes. And then also the, pro uh, the administration process, the, uh, the, the evaluation, the monitoring process will be more enhanced. Do you remember with the machine learning, we can get a lot of data. We, we can, um, no, the data is, we get it from different, sources but basically with the data we we can get the pattern we can get the insight that is the it's a good um mining right in the past we mine the gold we mine the um, the silver the ore the diamond but now right like a, what is the most expensive mining uh, stuff is actually data Everybody like uh, always asking you, can we uh, get your information? When you apply, when when you when you download an application, you'll be asked, are you do you allow that your uh, personal information, your name, your photo, uh, we get it, we save it, and then you will say yes, yes, yes. You don't think about that, but those data will help the company to do all of this, all of this, um, to get all of this um, rich information that help them to make decision, business decision. Somebody asks like, a, will AI uh, help the business? Yes, this is what AI is. Like a, AI will collect all this information. You use ChatGPT, for example, we are talking about ChatGPT letter, but, we use all this information, we type in anything, it will make the machine clever and clever, right? More clever, right? With being more clever, we can get benefit on the exchange of our personal information. So for example, like that. But I mean, like a, now, like a, we live in the world, like a, where we want to get benefit, so we can... Uh, maybe we want to share some of our personal information. But it doesn't mean that uh, if you don't want to use it, this is bad. No, it's just like a, there is a pro and cons for uh, for using the data uh, for, for you to, to give your personal information to a certain group of people. You just need to be careful like uh, what you share, and when you share and what is the, we need to improve our literacy when we are sharing stuff.
I'll go back on this later. But basically with AI, back to the uh, machine learning, we got a personalized learning, student support, intelligent tutoring system, automatic grading system, administrative process, predictive analytic, research and data ana analysis. Okay, now um, we are going to go on this personalized learning, right? Some of you might have known about this, but basically um, what we see as a lecturer, as a student, we will um, behind the scene, right? Like uh, there are a lot of things going on. It's an AI, it's machine learning, deep learning, everything happening at the background, right? But what we um, what we receive as the end users is like a we can get content that we need, we can get content that we prefer, we can get content that is a sign for us specifically. We can get personalized feedback based on the content that we have. We no longer have to sit in a class and have to receive one single lecture from one lecture. Right, because with this uh, online system, for example, and then the um, AI, the machine learning actually help the lecturer actually to uh, give a specialized content for you, right? Because you are very quick in learning, right? And because you are very quick in learning, you will receive more things than the other people who are struggling in learning something. And then there's also a recommendation for the academic progress. So this is an example. Uh, Can we go, for example, it's not yet in Indonesia or in Australia yet, right? Basically, with the Can we go, you can get um, personalized information. Depending on what you ask, depending on what you need, uh, you will be uh, you will be given personalized tutor. So the Can me go will be your personalized tutor. You know, like a Can Academy, right? Like a, you can use Can Academy for anything. So this is where uh, you can get your tutor uh, through this Can me go. Remember the one that I just showed before, um, the Mopi Mox. Um, it's actually the same. It's something that it's not just a normal learning management system who just like share all this information to you, but it is actually the teacher can provide information that is needed for you. So if the if you if the teacher thinks that you need A B C, then the teacher can give you A B C, and you will be assessed based on the A B C information uh, given assigned by the teachers to you. This is like a, um, another um, form is Duolingo, for example. Duolingo is when you want to learn new languages. It's using AI as well. It's actually help you uh, before you start all the process of learning a uh, learning language, you'll be asked. Depending on the answer, right? The answer that you give, you'll be given a uh, word, set of words uh, that is different from its level. And it is not just based on your assessment. Oh, I am new to Japanese. I know some word phrases. I can have simple conversation. I'm an intermediate or higher. No, it is just one parameter. But you actually can, you are also asked like, a, why? What is the motivation? Why is the, what is the motivation you want to learn this? And all the other questions, actually it will form how often you need to learn, how much you need to learn, and what do you need to learn for, so you will be able to achieve a specific purpose. This is also very interesting because it's using machine learning as well within the, so within the, the learning management system. If you want to know like uh, if there is any similar project, um, you can actually upload your worksheet, your project, your paper, and then there will be like a other similar project 
maybe maybe not uh, they are submitted by other students or other teacher or lecturer and then based on that you will the lecturer can get inspiration what other school have been doing the students can get inspiration how like other students have done it of course there's also a lot there are a lot of um, pro and cons for doing this because some students like um, i'm talking to you students maybe you will think ah okay let's let's do let's let's use this one for my submission and then you you cheat maybe you do something that is not supposed to do right no that's not how it works all of this information is given it's provided so you can uh, learn something next one intelligent tutoring system uh come back to the idea uh, i'm talking from the perspective of the end users you will got a personalized tutoring or feedback because you learn something specific you help to uh, it helps you to grasp com com complex concept and it gives you assistance in identifying areas for improvement and tracking your progress okay um let's do this so this is the same it's actually um give you some you can first you need to upload first like a, what you have and based on that the system will look this is like a back to the idea of machine learning then the system will look at the back okay what is available what is happening there and then like a, they suggest to you like a, what you need uh, what you need to do right and uh, and then they give you feedback on what you have done and of course this is very useful uh, for you to improve your to improve your skill but also like uh, to satisfy the personal interest that you have okay uh, student support right like uh, we know all of this about student support and um we use that to, uh right now like a lot of companies instead of hiring um hiring uh customer service they are hiring this uh, they created uh, chatbots or virtual assistant to answers and sometimes what happen is um, uh what happened is this machine is not trained properly. So instead of giving the right answer, this uh, chatbot or virtual assistant give like a pretty poor uh, fair or very poor answers, which make it is not really helpful, but instead it gives a lot of confusion. It gives uh, a lot of problem by itself. So um, depending on how you train uh, your, um, your chatbots and virtual assistant it can actually helps but it can actually um, make people not engage properly so there is a an app called mainstay so this app actually really helpful for the uh, for the students actually and also for the staff to provide 24 7 support right so uh, they will ask you uh, the what kind of problem you have and then they will answer you they will send you more information um, they will send you more information uh, and depending on your answer it's the answer it will be really uh, useful for you and uh, yeah so this is basically a really good app uh, that will help the students to stay to stay in the program and uh, hopefully will graduate on time so it is like a, a lot of reminder uh helping web this is wubot like actually help you when you are in crisis and um yeah so this is such uh such uh, the these are some example of the um, the AI uh, tool that actually can help 
uh, students AI and machine learning tool that can help students to stay and graduate. Predictive analysis. Remember, we talk about predictive. So they are looking at the, um, uh, the trends and then the outcome of the students and the academic performance. And then it gives you prediction like uh, whether you are going to graduate or not. It helps the institution to really understand like uh, which students are at risk, not only based on the uh, subjective assumption, but it is based on the data. And then uh, there are so many uh, examples of using this predictive, uh, using AI machine learning for prediction. This is performance indicator before it was SAP. This is a Qualtrics. Uh, just give you a couple of examples, then you can explore yourself whichever you need. It. And then the uh, and then also the automatic grading system because we got so many students. How we can do it? Like uh, how can we? But how can we serve so many students but still keep the personalized uh, feedback for each of you because you don't want. Uh, you to get a lot of, um, you know, like an answer. Uh, you got a lot of answer without, um, without having some personalization uh, in the answer because, ah, your, your tutor answer is the same like me. So what is the difference? Uh, we are doing exactly, we are, we are not doing, uh, we are not doing the same thing. We are doing the same pro, we are doing the same project, but each of us are very unique. How can the answer is different? How can the answer is the same? So maybe the student will think, okay, let's do it. Um, let's let's cheat, like make the same because the, the lecturer will answer the same thing. This is Ternitin. I believe you know all of you. Um, this is to check like uh, if you... Uh, paper is actually plagiarized and yeah administrative system um, with the AI and machine learning it actually can improve operational efficiency within educational institution to help you so if you are afraid for example like uh, I'm afraid that if AI, I am afraid uh, if AI will take over my job, right? AI will actually um, automate a lot of job that is mundane, that is like a repetitive, right? Uh, if you got like a step A, step B, step C, step D, step E, and that's likely, it's very likely uh, you might, you will lose the job because you know, like if you don't do anything, you just keep doing the same thing, like a repetitive, then it can easily be replaced by AI. But AI actually, uh, if we look at AI as our assistant, actually, we we should not be afraid that to lose the job because AI actually, number one, will make our job easier, will make our job faster, right? And and then we have more time and with the uh, remaining time with additional time extra time that we have then we can actually make something better we can think further we can be more creative We're actually using more our brains to be more creative because basically uh, although ai can make things very fast um, actually the 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 complexity of the human brains uh, if we use it properly right and um, it is it 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 is still unbeatable so uh yeah this is some example of scheduling uh, so it depending on the time and depending on your day, what, what do you want to achieve? So there are many, many ways, like uh, hundreds of apps, tools that actually been developed uh, using AI and machine learning to help the process 
uh, automated. So you don't have to, oh, can, can, so for example, like, uh, for example, I'm going to make an, to make appointment. We don't have to, we don't really have to like um, talk to hundred people. Can you come? Can you come? Can you not come? Because everything has been like automatically put into a calendar. So you can see like who can come, who cannot. And then what is the, uh, what do we need to do on this particular time? So that is um, how we can actually like uh, improve our life, not being stressed with something that can be done by AI. So then the next one, we are going to discuss this further, but basically with the AI, a lot of tools that can help you, including generative AI, to analyze vast amount of data, identify correlation, conduct literature review, make prediction to support scientific inquiry and academic publication. Right. Uh, yeah, this one is a tableau, Power BI, they are all using AI. You can explore that if you need it. And if you're for writing a paper, you can use, for example, Grammarly uh, to help you to improve your writing. So now we are talking about generative AI, right? We all know that generative AI, actually, um, it's a large, large language model. Right, so uh, we can also call it LLM, right? So that is uh, this data comes from a different types of sources, maybe from text, images, speech, structured data, 3D signals, and anything. And this is like a has been you know like a developed by um, Stanford. Institute for Human Centered Artificial Intelligence, like a, a while ago. It's not a new thing, right? So they created what is called like the discussing about what's the foundational model, which actually we are using now for the large language model in form of uh, generative AI in in form of chat GPT or BART or anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. So with this uh, foundational model, actually, uh, based on the data, for, there's a foundational model, you input this data, and then you adapt it into different kind of tasks. So what is what is this task? The task is basically can help you answer questions, can help you to analyze the sentiment, can help you to extract information can help you to caption image, recognize object, and in following instruction. So basically, you got the technology, right? You got Intel, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and um, NVIDIA, right? And then there is a cloud base. Basically, it's a Google Cloud, Azure by Microsoft and then AWS, right, by Amazon. And there are many foundational models, including OpenAI, right? This foundational model actually um, is called large scale foundational model um, where they got the data from the cloud. And then, this is um, uh, using this foundation model, we started to do like a tooling. We developed DIY tools for the engineering pipeline, steering, compliance, and security. And then uh, with this on the top of this foundational model, you create different kinds of apps that you can see now, like micros uh word powerpoint uh and then you can have uh air paper copy ai all this type of this app actually can help you uh um to improve your work this all sort of toolings toolings that you develop internally or tooling tools that you can uh you can develop to help your work 
right? So this is like a basically like a how if you look at OpenAI, oh, where is it? Like a, where it is located? It's located here. And this is like a, with the chat GPT, you can put chat GPT into all these tools that you can think of. There are hundreds of them right, right now. So um, with the general AI, this is the AI that can create new content such as text, image, audio, video, as you can see from the uh, foundational model before. The generative AI models are trained on a large data set. The data sets coming from existing content. Uh, so for example, if you know ChatGPT, the content is coming from before 2021, right? And then they use it, they use this data to learn patterns and rules that govern that how that content is created. Once the generative AI models has been trained, it can be used to create new content that is similar to the content it was trained on. So there are like a hundreds of content and this uh, uh, model, generative AI model is actually like, oh, there's content here, I took here from here and here. So you train that to uh, produce something uh, that you need that you ask, right? Like I remember it's answering questions. That's one of the tasks that they have to do. So there are open AI, there are BART, there are Bing, and many other things. But this chat GPT uh, actually uh, do not entertain a lot of things. So for example, they do not entertain questions that promote hate speech or discrimination. But in fact, personal privacy, violate someone right, or uh, in abusive, or harassing, they are not answering those kind of questions. So there are a lot of limitation because they are just based on the existing data. So we can go back on this one. Uh, oh, when you are writing something, so when, when, once you are actually writing something on ChatGPT, uh, you can actually check. Uh, you ask something and then you got some writing. You cannot just use directly because sometimes ChatGPT can be ha hallucinated. Basically, they are not. They are just combine all this information. So you need to really, really, really use your brain. Really, really use your uh, conscience to check like uh, if this information is right or not. Right. Because we can know like, okay, well, this is human right, human written, this is not. But even when they say 100% or 0% human written, right? It can still be wrong. It is. It doesn't guarantee that you got the right, the most right question. So this is like a 40%, 40.54% AI GPT. Maybe right, maybe not, no. Uh, nobody really know actually because the the large of the data is so large that you sometimes you don't really know. But if you use this a lot, right, then you know that something from the language that is produced, then you probably uh, can get some sense. No, this is not uh, the human language. This is more on the bot, uh, you know, produced language. So you can get a mixed signal like, a, well, this is this text is human written, AI generated, or so on. So, so instead with this um, zero GPT or GPT zero, actually it helps uh, the lecturer actually can help them to see uh, whether your paper or your work it is plagiarized because Turnitin may not be able to uh, get this information, but zero GPT or GPT zero may help your lecturer to know that whether how many percents of your work are actually produced or generated by chat GPT. So there are many ways of 
uh, using AI, generative AI in education. So we are actually uh, looking at the different ways. Uh, I'm giving example from uh, OpenAI, but there are, I will tell you later, but please remind me. Um, that I'm also using a different kinds of um, generative AI. And usually like a, it gives you different results and it actually helps you to enrich um, the insight and reach uh, the information that you provided. So you should use AI for something beyond, can you answer this? Can you answer that, right? Um, so for example, for a lecturer, we, we can use that for lesson planning. It can help you to develop questions. It can help you to develop lesson plan, curriculum. But whatever written here, again, you have to use it as the inspiration. You cannot use this one as it is. And um, it is usually very interesting, like, a, uh, but I'm, I'll talk more about this. Um, when you are doing the, it, it is like, a, it, it can be used as a material for, for a, brainstorming actually, uh, what can be used? What, what would be like the best way? What some creative ideas? Based on this creative idea, what kind of question we should ask people, right? Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, we can also start, uh, sometimes we start with the SDG goals, which is the United Nations uh, SDG goals as a starting point to get some ideas. Uh, the most important actually, like uh, when we are uh, using generative AI is the prompting, how you ask questions, how you, um, how you create the question, how do you um, make the question, uh, uh, how do you make the question, really um, appealing, uh, not just like, a, okay, what is that? What is this? What is that? What is this? But thinking deeply beyond what you can uh, see. So this is um, an example of uh, some of the course outline, learning about learning Bahasa Indonesia. And some people suggested that the before uh, we actually asking them like, uh, can you write down, can you write down more information about uh, the course outline for Bahasa Indonesia year seven? You should give them like a basic information. So for example, refer to this um, curriculum, A, B, C, um, and then, which year, uh, which uh, school, and so on, because it will give you a better answer. It's an art of asking question. It's an art of writing a prompt. You should try, like if you really want to use generative AI for your teaching and learning, you should try, uh, try to make a trial and error, uh, which one, how to write the better prompt for uh, for your uh, for your um, teaching and learning yes. purpose. And then this again like uh, um, the learning activities. I'm going to show you the next page. This is something a uh, tips by Ethan and Lila Molik uh, from Wharton um, for Wharton Interactive. So they are writing a prompt, right? Uh, writing a prompt model that actually they put in the system. So it is a role playing basically as a starting point for a teacher or for a student to learn something, uh, to create some uh, material for teaching and learning. So in this prompt, this is behind the scene, right? They created uh, tips, for example, 
act as a teacher, right? Act as a teacher, um, and then uh, writing a pl lesson plan. You need to ask the teacher. You can uh, copy paste this and then uh, try yourself. First, introduce yourself and ask the teacher what topic they want to teach and grade level their students wait for the teacher to respond. So the generative AI will act as a teacher. If you do not know how to ask questions, you just copy paste this and then it will ask you what 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 do you what do you want to learn? What do you want to teach? What level? You'll be asked like that, right? And uh and then the, the prompt will not move anything, will not continue to answer until the teacher responds. So it is like a one step at a time. And um, so basically you can copy paste all this prompt into ChatGPT or Bing or Bard, and then they will ask you like a step-by-step -step the same question. It's like a... And then the, the, after the teacher respond, the prompt will ask you again. Okay, um, now you are, um, oh, so you want to teach Bahasa Indonesia level seven. Okay, do you think your students will have an existing knowledge about this topic or it is an entirely new topics? Uh, do you, what do you want the students know by learning about that? It asks the teacher. So it is a role-playing situation where uh, the teacher actually will need to answer before they were given, um, they were given like uh, the whole answer, like what we, what we had before, right? So what we had before, it was just like a act as a teacher, um, please uh, give me the course plan. But this one is an, an example why we should make the uh, the inquiry it's more detailed because it will give you better result even though it is not 100% true it will give you better result but we can talk more about that right uh this one is the scenario of a instructional coach helping a teacher plan a lesson so we are the teacher helped by the instructional coach and then this one is uh, instructional designer, right? It will give, uh, especially we need this kind of, um, we need this kind of prompt when we want to write um, this um, information later on on the website because it will give you more detail and better language, uh, better presentation in the better explanation for the topic that you want to teach. And this one is like, a, it is a student, right? Uh, what, what do we need as a teacher needs to do? Like uh, if we want the st students to learn about something, right? And uh, if we follow this prompt again, right? It will give you step-by-step step what you need to do, what you have to ask your students and what the students need to produce. So the students will not be confused. The student will be able to follow through and you will be able to um, explain to them what you need to explain in terms of the topic that has to be done in the curriculum. Assessment, right? There are so many ways we can use uh, the chat GPT for assessment. So this is very interesting. And then we can make the rubric uh, based on that. And you can also like uh, send the students, the students work into chat GPT and based on the, based on the, On the criteria, uh, we can actually get the score and get the comments. But again, you are the person who know the students very well. You cannot just rely on the assessment, but it helps you to make assessment based on the result made by the students.
Use case one, you share your curriculum to chat GPT, ask it to ask, ask it to a lesson plan about a topic, ask it to create five questions, exam about the topic, and the most important, the, the, less, the last part, create your own. Never use the chat GPT questions like uh, raw, means that uh, you don't do anything on that because it's a plagiarism and it is not something you know like uh, you should do, but it gives you some idea what you need to do. Okay. Uh, retention, it helps the students to retain uh, them, like um, how we can actually support the students. Uh, if the students have a problem, what needs to be done, what kind of support we should give to them. Oh, can't really see this one. Basically, if English is not your first language, how you can use ChatGPT to improve and translate to other language. Homework assistant, that's another thing um, that you can actually uh, do to help you to do your homework. Personal tutor, of course, like uh, this is very interesting. Sometimes like uh, I found out like uh, if for a tutor or for a lecturer, they have difficulties to give a feedback. Uh, to give feedback for the for the students, right? Okay, what is happening here? Like how we can uh, actually improve uh, the students. Sorry, um, Pak Ranga. I think there is something wrong with the um, uh, with the um, with the system. I think uh, somebody what? just I think somebody just entered the system and go into my computer. Oh really? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know how to solve it. Uh, is there any suggestion? Um, I'm not so sure. Maybe I'll just stop first. Uh, yes. Yeah, you can. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I think uh, who is having this? Okay, I'll, I'll try to share again. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm not sure whether our student capable to do that. Uh, I'm not sure it, it's from our student because we, we don't learn this kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yes. Uh, so it's helping the homework project assistant. Um, that's, I think every student know how to do that, homework project assistant. And then also personal tutor. Uh, for us back to this, like a, uh, there is a study at my university actually, like a helping uh, university lecturer to give feedback right uh, because sometimes we only give like a, okay good nice and uh not very good or something like that so it's not really helping and about a lot of students uh there are a lot of feedback that needs to be given and it actually helped them so actually with the uh, uh generative ai it actually help us to write down uh based on the aspect that we want to see give the uh give better feedback to them Uh, writing, of course, uh, it's something that we have to do, and and also like uh, 
in a lower lower um, school actually helps like a teacher parent relationship as well like uh, for making a letter uh, basically uh, saying in better and nicely making a contract and so on in research yeah there are many types of there are many things that we can do with research which is like identify problem evaluate literature create hypothesis research design describe population data collection data analysis and the report writing uh problem identification when we try when we had an hour to solve a problem and my life depending on depended on it, it i would use the first 55 minutes determining proper questions so that's what albert einstein does and uh so that's why when we do a research when you write your thesis or something like that we have to come up with a lot of questions and sometimes it is very difficult for a lot of uh, students, especially from Indonesia, to write down what question we want to answer, right? And uh, with the ChatGPT actually uh, help us to write down all the questions that we need to ask the students. And based on this question, we process, uh, we follow, for example, the process called question formulation technique. And it helped us to give us a lot of other questions that we can use for our survey, for our interview, for observation and testing. But there are a lot of other things that we can do to define the problem, how we can actually use that to ideate, to, uh, to design and develop the product. Uh, especially we can uh, make the specification for our product there are so many things but also um, report writing it's very helpful again we use uh, grammarly for example it helps us and then also when we use the open ai um, we are sorry uh, zero gpt gpt zero where we can actually use this one um, it actually can help us to know like uh, whether this is this good or not? So there are many pro and cons like using uh, uh, generative AI in our teaching and learning and research. The pro actually it is instant, it's quick, right? And it is accessible. It becomes such a, uh, a hit for a lot of people. It is become very popular. And it is versatile. You can, with this uh, large language model, as long as you got you know how to for, for make a for, variety for the prompt, how to make a better prompt. Prompt is the question, the input that you send to the large language model, uh, like uh, OpenAI or BART or um, Bing. Actually, you can get a variety of answers, variety of insight, variety of information. With this, uh, actually, with the detail prompt, right? Like we, uh, we can have uh, some cons can be bias, right? The gender bias, and then racial bias, age bias can be also misleading, um, in what we um we are given, and sometimes like all the information are not true. Uh, we are lack of understanding. Um, sometimes the, the machine cannot really answer what we want. And we, there's a tendency that we also do plagiarism. And then some, some of the, uh, some of us like, uh, okay, well, we think this is the, the, the best source of truth for our, uh, for our life, uh, for our work, right? So that's why um we can really give we can really like uh, give the the right um the most trustable information well back to what i said before like uh, there are ma many ways how we do prom we are not going to discuss it today but a uh, prom is actually depending on what we ask we will get different answers right 
the answer can be really quick. The answer they can be really quick to get, but it can be, uh, and also it can be as detailed as possible, or it can be very general. Well, uh, it's there are many university. Basically, there are many university. They are having a problems like a whether they want to use um, generative AI or not, right? For some of them, like uh, who has used, uh, they study some university, they think if they use ChatGPT, they need to have a, like a clear guideline how to do it. And there are so many guidelines that you can actually follow. You can see check from open uh, AI guideline or UNESCO guideline how to use um, the generative generative AI in teaching and learning at school. Um, so this is like a Stanford, right? Uh, so we are afraid that the student will do plagiarism, right? But only based on the poll, uh, only 5% submitted written materials directly from ChatGPT. So how do we do that? Like this is a challenge. How do we make sure that the students who are using ChatGPT uh, not submitting um, exactly the same thing they got from ChatGPT? Right? So there are, there are many ways how to do it. For example, uh, there are, uh, they have to uh, share the link, they have to what, how they get all this information from ChatGPT. There are many ways for you to find out and ask your students. So Stanford is one of the player, like an early player, uh, actually using ChatGPT in the, um, starting from 2022. Other university like uh, Ivy League University using that is Cambridge University. Uh, and almost like a, almost 50% of them using AI to get help with their ass assessment. Um, and then, um, and then like um, they, and then they also say that, um, okay, submitting uh, this document, you can use that, but submitting the document that is not, um, that is purely from ChatGPT is considered as a misconduct. So, you know, like uh, the university needs to have a balance, like uh, what to do and what needs to, uh, to be done and not. And there are also many other places uh, you can always find from the internet how, uh, you know, like uh, OpenAI or um, like other form of generative AI used in not just at the university, also like in the administration level. A lot of people in the developing country, they are usually, uh, they are afraid, like uh, their job is being replaced because they don't have other um, skills for doing, uh, for doing other job. So that's why it is, you know, like uh, often the technology are not being used uh, because of this situation. It is um, the mindset of um, uh, institution who are using uh, generative AI actually, it's the same. Like uh, you find information from Google, you ask other people, you, the instructor has the roles uh, to set up like a specific policy in regards to generative AI in their course. Uh, and students need to clarify to their instructor if they are using um, generative AI tools. So um, basically it is a matter of, um, if you use similar to when you use Ternitin as well, right? Like uh, when we are doing study, we are doing something for the, we are doing something for ourselves, right? And that's why 
we need to be responsible as a student and we need to be responsible as a lecturer as well or for any materials because we are doing this for ourselves and for for the for the knowledge for the community it is totally uh considered as a misconduct if you are using um information that cannot be considered as the like a truth the single source of truth um so that's why you have you have to be super careful on that you need to check with your university or your organization uh, whether you are allowed to use it or not you don't want to spend so much time in your assessment then it end up that uh, you are you don't pass because your unit coordinator say okay you cannot use chat gpt and i found out that whatever you write is from chat gpt so it is because the perception of people about chat gpt still vary greatly and that's why you have to check can you use it or not don't just use it um then without referencing back and then you uh you will end up with losing your opportunity in your study i'll just continue because there are so many rules we are not going to discuss basically uh As a university, we need to check what is going on with other university or schools and getting their feedback, getting feedback from parents, from students and teachers, make sure that everybody on the same place. Uh, whatever um, bands that you have now, it should not be used as the uh, permanent band because things might change and if your university or schools or your organization does not really follow that, it 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 can be, uh, it will risk that university is left behind or not following the, you know, like a, the the rule or the expectation. Adaptive stance, which means that um, you have to be um, flexible looking at the situation make sure that any policy that you develop does not have negative consequences uh, for students teachers or educational process and then at each school needs to have a um, um, consultation committee basically to continuously create and review policy that you have well if you want to learn more about chat gpt there are so many courses not just gen, uh, chat GPT, but generative AI, how to use it in detail. We won't be able to cover everything here, um, but there are so much aspect um, that you can learn from generative AI courses. Can AI replace a university lecturer? Yes and no. Yes, uh, if you don't do anything, if you are not, um, if you are not ready, if you don't want to improve your skill, if you just stay in your comfort zone, there is likely that your the AI replace your position. But you keep if you keep learning, um, as our as a part of our um, uh, responsibility as a lecturer as a student, um, there is un unlikely you know like uh, that we're going to be replaced because we keep moving and we keep uh, in, uh, making ourselves like a, a valuable asset for the company, for the university. See, there are a lot of uh, um, articles about um, generative AI uh, before, but now it things have changed, the, things have changed a bit in terms of the landscape people starting to be more open in using that and then they are trying to find solution. So instead of banning uh, the tool, uh, the 
sentiment is now is more into embracing the two and how we can make things uh, at maximum use of the any tool that we we can see here. So this is an example like a before. This is a fun example where I'm asking like when did Queen Elizabeth die? You know that Queen Elizabeth died. Um, in in 2022, right? So the chat GPT, um, opening I said, as for my last update, September 2021, Queen Elizabeth II was alive. I do not have access to real-time information. So I recommend checking the latest news sources or official announcement for the most recent on Queen Elizabeth II status. So they said like, a, based on my, Based on my data, he, she was still alive, right? Because the data was not updated. But it is very interesting, like uh, the result from Google saying, Queen Elizabeth II is still alive, right? Like <laughs> that's, she was born on this and it's very, you know, like it's, it, if you read that, it's very um, uh, certain the Queen Elizabeth is still alive. But then there's an, the answer from being said that Queen Elizabeth II the UK longest serving monarch died on the 8th September uh, at Bamwell Castle in Scotland. She passed away peacefully at the age of 96. Her reign was the longest of any British monarch. And this gives you some links to visit, which is from Wikipedia and BBC News. So oh, basically a couple of things that you need to know. It might be sound right, but be wrong. It might be give, it might give you incorrect or misleading information, often called a hallucination in the literature. It can make up things and or like quotes or citation might, might say only one answer, even though you can have more of it or misrepresent different sides of argument. It doesn't know anything. Its knowledge is not up to date trained in English. So if you ask something in Bahasa, it may not give you the right answer. Um, it doesn't have access to calculator or internet. Um, it doesn't have, uh, can browse uh, generally, like uh, apart from being, uh, well, cannot browse the web or access up to date information from the internet. And it can't verify facts or do things like complex calculation. So this is a, it's a, real example like uh, how three um, generative AI tool used to answer different uh, answer uh, uh, the same questions. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, the, crea uh, the creator of ChatGPT, he said that ChatGPT is incredibly limited but good enough at some things to create a misleading impression of greatness. It is a mistake to be relying on it for anything important right now. It's a preview of progress. We have lots of work to do on robustness and truthfulness. So you can learn from here that um, no matter how cool your English writing is and how cool um, your presentation is, but it can be wrong. It is sometimes it is not the real truth. Right, like uh, we have tried um, many ways, like uh, ask um, somebody, like, uh, oh, do you know about this, sir? Um, uh, sir, a sometimes ChatGPT will answer you, even though this character does not exist. So just be be very very careful in whatever information you get from this generative AI. And uh, UNESCO actually, as I said before, has uh, developed a new uh, tool for, under, uh, for understanding how to teach properly using uh, generative AI. So check it out if you want to know more. So this is some example of the content from UNESCO. It says that like, uh, it can be used for guide on the side, personal tutor, co-designer, exploratorium, study buddy, motivator, and then some examples of the implementation. So this can give you both the teachers and the students how to use 
uh, generative AI for your teaching and learning. So um, this is like a back to what we have been doing as um, organization, uh, customer experience inside, we are doing the humanity center design, right? So how is it related to the uh, generative AI, right? So we are actually using generative AI to help to solve the problem of the humanity. So we know we are aware that uh, uh, generative AI does not give the, the best, not always the, the, the most right answers, right? But uh, generative AI actually like a fasten the process for us to, um, to do something for the climate, for example, the humanity. Uh, when we talk about humanity, we are talking beyond the human. We are talking about our earth. We are talking about um, the urgency what is going on right now? Why there are so many plastic in why what happened in our sea? What happened in our world? Uh, what happened with the uh, um, renewable energy? What happened with a lot of things, like a lot of issues uh, happening in our world? And it helps us to get all this information very, very quick and using it correctly. Um, with the steps that we have discussed before, it is hopefully um, help us to um, to make our world a better place to be. And um, we are, we'll never be afraid of uh, being replaced by anything because as a, we have a humanly competitive advantage, as a human, we can connect with people. The, the generative AI, uh, basically, it's only taking the data through the foundational model. It's a large language model, uh, foundational model, and then it's like, a, okay, well, make a prediction. It can be wrong, it can be right, right? But as a human, we can make personal interaction, emotional connection. That's what the AI doesn't have. And we have a contextual understanding, right? Even though we are not as fast as the calculator on Excel scale, we are not as fast as like um, getting all this information, we have a deep understanding about the context that we are working in. And uh, as a human, we also have a flexibility, adaptability, which means that if the generative AI does not want to talk about something, okay, well, this is, Racist. This is sensitive issue. As a human, we can still think. Okay, we can still um, thinking. Okay, well, we are maybe can talk about it. We can look at this issue because this is a really important issue. It should not be. Uh, it should not be neglected. Something like that. And then we also have a practical experience that makes us different, that makes us unique, that is different from one to another. And we understand about ethical and social consideration as well. It's not just combining all this information from different sources, but it is like uh, we, com we collect all this information that we got and with our heart, we can make a better ethical and social consideration. Back to SDG goal, there are so much work that we have to do uh, in a very limited time. And yeah, so that's what we have done today. We learning about different types of AI, generative AI and machine learning and how it is. it can be used for education, the scenarios of AI in education and the humanity center design. So we are like a base in Western Australia. We are also based in Indonesia. If you are interested like uh, to partner with us, uh, whether you are a student, whether you are a lecturer, you can actually like, uh, like explore this with us, doing a research together, doing if you want to do an uh, internship, even like uh, coming to Australia uh, to see what is happening here 
and then to learn from the experience here that's also possible as well or you just come and um, uh, we can develop design uh, the program for you uh, for you for uh, lecturer for the students um, short term mid term or long term to be here in Australia in uh, um, working with us in a different kind of project. I think that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much, Pak Ranga. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yunis. So actually, uh, our students are really waiting for this topic to be presented in seminar. They are really uh, curious about this AI. Uh, and today we have almost 200 questions. But actually, most of the questions are about AI in general. I will ask uh, one of those questions, but then we will see some questions from uh, on AI in education. So the first question is, is there any ethical consideration on AI developments? I think this question uh, arrived when, when we, you show about this uh, SOPIA. Uh, then people, uh, our, our students are uh, uh, curious about this. Uh, is it is ethical or, or not? Uh, what do you think? Mm. Uh, so it is not specifically on education, right? So is AI ethical or not, right? Um, well, I mean, like, a, from my point of view, right, um, depending on to what extent you're using the, um, the Sophia, for example, right? Sophia is basically a machine, like my computer, like any other computer. We just put face into Sophia, you probably use like a um, synthetic skin or something like that that you use. So it looks like a human being. And this machine uh, was designed uh, to be more advanced, uh, but it doesn't replicate the human brain, in my opinion, to what extent. Uh, it's just like a more advanced and then it can help you to think and to role play, to simulate a different kind of situation. It actually um, give you um, some ideas to think like, a, what, like what, it is very valid what the students ask, is it ethical or not, right? So then we will think like, a, if we want to progress the development of AI, should we go much further than this or should we stay or what do we have to do, right? So it, it makes us think. It's just adding like a face on that, but it's basically just a machine. It's the same, it, 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 uh, it doesn't have the full uh, full set of emotion that I described before, right? Like, because it is not how, uh, you know, like a, it's not created to replace human. I think that's my opinion. And I uh, again, like a, in short, so far, um, it is still ethical. Okay, so uh, I will ask some uh, question which related to the education. Uh, mm -hmm. The first is, wait, uh, what is the risk and weakness of replacing replacing teacher by AI, if it is possible? I mean. mm. We are not replacing teacher. We are supporting teacher. Um, AI will support teachers. Do you know um, in, in Australia, uh, I just heard yesterday, teacher kill, uh, committed suicide. Why? Because there are so much work that they cannot cope. Why? They have to create a lesson plan. They have to um, assess the students, they have to do a lot of things. They don't have time for themselves. They have to do work during the holiday and everything. Can you imagine that situation in Indonesia? I talked to hundreds of teachers and they don't have life, right? And there are a lot of administration stuff that needs to be done. But I mean, like probably in Indonesia, people do not think to commit suicide, right? But it reduced the quality of their life. And um, the AI actually, uh, if teachers know how to use AI, actually they can uh, improve their, it can improve their life. It can reduce the amount, if it is like a, 
if it is used properly, monitor, evaluate how much they can uh, save sometimes, it will save a lot of their time. Say, for example, but with but giving a better result. So, for example, remember I mentioned about giving the feedback. That's the, the work of my colleagues at UNSW doing. They are uh, helping teachers giving the feedback, better feedback with AI. And the feedback can be so much variety instead of bagus. Sudah cukup. <laughs> That's how you do. A lot of teachers like because you, one teacher have to make a report for maybe two hundred students. How do they have time? Yeah, I think that's how I look at it. So, uh, regarding to the using of AI in uh, Indonesia, for example, is it possible that this uh, high technology being used in the develop? Uh, the, in the developing countries, oh, actually Indonesia, we, uh, the country with, with with low education infrastructure, but is it still possible to implement this? Yes, yes, um, probably like uh, because based on our work in um, with um, with with the Department of Education and then also Department of Foreign Affairs Australia and Indonesian Department of Education. We have, we had the privilege to work with teachers in rural, remote, and also the city area, right? Uh, the, the technology um, at this point of time, we still use the, uh, the mobile phone and the, mobile phone and also the electricity and also the data as well. For the teachers in the remote area, this might not be possible. But if you guys have some ideas how to create a app that can be used offline, it's it's not, uh, you know, like because we can train the data, the machine learning data, we can use the uh, supervised learning and that actually will help um, if everything is created within the device for example we don't necessarily have to give the device to everybody we might have like a few devices only for uh, one school like maybe two devices so everybody can learn on that that's possible as well uh, so we don't really need the um, you know, like the data or internet connection, actually to get a better um, access to, you know, for the technology. Of course, maybe this is not happening yet, but you can think about this. Uh, but for uh, for teacher, because it is, uh, we talk about uh, uh, generative AI, everything is available online. Um, for people in rural area, people in the city, this, all the tools are available. And it's just that whether they want to use it or not, whether they can use it or not, that's only the only two questions that we can face right now. It is not about whether it is possible or not, but it is whether they can or they, uh, they want to do it or not. I think that's my question, my answer. But. Uh, so we still have many questions from students. I will uh, start to ask you one by one. Uh, is there any social negative effects of using AI, AI based education? So in social effect, is there any negative effects uh, regarding to so social? Social means uh, economic uh, economic of people what have from, from education. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it will be decreasing or not or another? thing mm -hmm. social effect there will be a lot of social effect <laughs> you know uh, like a... <laughs> is there any negative ones um yeah 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 i mean like uh, there was a couple of questions answered um it's the same my answer will be the same as like is there any uh, negative impact of using mobile phone yes <laughs> is because you can be uh you know like um socially inadequate if you just spend mm. so much time on that um if you do not really care about what other people if you keep uh breaching the the rules 
if there is a rule you cannot cheat or you cannot you know like a use generative ai to submit the paper and you keep using that that's a lot of negative impact and it again depend on the people so it is the technology is only an enabler uh it's go back to you like whether you can use it apply it properly or not okay i think it's clear uh, mm -hmm. uh there are still many questions what types <laughs> yeah, of no. data are typically typically collected in educated educational context on development of machine learning what kind of data that uh, people uh, collect what kind of data people collect yeah um there are depending on what the purpose you want to you can collect any data um say for example um we use machine learning a lot in the, um, I'll just give you an example. Uh, one is about student retention. Yeah. The student retentions, uh, a lot of students, they don't have access, uh, they don't, they do not know how to talk to people. They don't have access because uh, psych psychology, of, uh, people who can help with the um, psychological problem are rare and maybe expensive. Maybe they are shy of, uh, saying that, so uh, the, the the machine learning actually collected data. Okay, uh, is the students um, trying to commit suicide? Uh, how often they don't come to? How often they come to class? Uh, what is their grade? Uh, like, uh, do they have friends? What sort of problem they talk with them? Uh, with the chatbot. So all this data are data that you can collect to help uh, with the student with their problems and help uh, later on, you can use this data for making the learning machine learning system model uh, to have an insight how we can, as a university, as a, as a lecturer, how we can care for these students. Are these students at risk or not, right? So those kind of data. But say, for example, you want to uh, understand like uh, what kind of uh, learning materials that actually attracted the students most, uh, you can actually create um, the model that actually collected the data. So for example, you have a video you give this video for the students to watch, right? So you can collect the data, how much, uh, how, how many hours, how many minutes, how often the students actually watch this video, right? So the length and then the repeat, uh, the repeated action, they watch this video. And then also like uh, the ability for the students to get, maybe 100% right or 80% right. So all this student, uh, all this information can help you whether the students, uh, whether um, this learning material is preferable. And then with this learning material itself, like you can create all sorts of parameters depending on the goal of the product or services that you want to develop. So there is basically no limitation. The sky is the limit. Okay. Uh, uh, the next question is talking about our uh, average of IQ in Indonesia. Uh, how big is the opportunity of AI to increase the average IQ of Indonesian people? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have but the is there any is there any uh, product? uh specifically created for this uh purpose um out of out of my uh, mind right now no no i don't know i don't know i need to check mm -hmm. but what i understand is um a lot of the products actually can help you right can train you either it is in a limited limited uh, limited uh, capabilities, for example, repeat, 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 right? Like, a, you know, like a, the language app that we, that I showed you before, the Duolingo, right? It helps you to memorize. That's like a, when you have this, um, 
lower order thinking, higher order thinking, hot uh, lot, and this time, it actually help you to memorize. If you your brain are not trained to memorize by using Duolingo, you can actually help to memorize in a fun way, right? And what I believe is like a I believe in neuroplasticity. I believe that our brain can actually change if we want to do something on our brain, right? Uh, if we if we do not know how to memorize, if we learn, say, for example, using this AI machine learning tool for learning language, it helps me to be able to memorize, which means hopefully will increase my IQ level. <laughs> but I don't have the, uh, the data on that yet. Um, but it is just like a, the common sense, how I connect. Like I'm I'm trying to connect the dots like the generative AI, like the GPT right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the next one is about chat GPT. So mm -hmm. we see some practice of using chat GPT, but uh, our student asking whether is it making, uh, is it making people literacy decrease? People literacy. Uh, what do you think? Uh, people literacy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, depending on the people. For me, no. For me, make me mm. more literate. But if, if again, like if the students just copy paste and believe everything what it is says, yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, you won't be able, you, you, first, you will be losing your, uh, you will be definitely losing your skill to do a research. You will be losing your skill to ask questions. You will be losing all the skill to read. All this literacy skill will be lo will be losing in a very short time if you just copy paste. That's it. And um, for me, no, it is it is actually improving my literacy because I do it um, in a responsible manner, in an ethical way. So that's why we need. Uh, you need to discuss about ethical way and a responsible way of using generative AI in our uh, in our teaching and learning because that is really important. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yunis. Uh, actually, maybe this is the last question. Uh, mm -hmm. So what next in education? What is the potential future of AI technology in education? Oh, okay. Um, the potential future is in Indonesia or in uh, all over the world? Uh, maybe in Indonesia, doctor. In Indonesia, um, mm -hmm. well, I think I, I will help the students to be more creative, more innovative. That's the thing. Whatever we will see, uh, because right now, like every single day, every single day, I don't, I don't remember. So just hold a second. I probably will give you. Um, um, just hold a second. Okay. So I think student needs to check this. Because every um, a lot of your students are content creator, right? And Some of them. <laughs> a lot of them, yeah, right. It's a lot of them. So here, see, this is like a, just a few of them, a few of them. There are so many of them, so many of them available for, say, for example, editing a video, generate animation making a summary or insight, text to speech, design, marketing and sales, uh, data generation, organization, and everything like this. And uh, this is the future. This just started. Every day there is always a company that create new tools or add generative AI or AI into their existing tool. So the, the, the future is limitless. Um, as long as you want to try, as long as you want to like pursue your dream and then um, 
and then try to connect what you are interested. So for example, maybe you are interested in the climate change or you want to create um, a content about it or you want to talk uh, uh, mark, uh, to talk with many people around the world. There are so many opportunity. It's like a, I myself, like a, I'm overwhelmed with the number of tools that come out every day. So it is a lot of opportunity for the students if they are interested um, to connect um, the, the things they learn at school um, and what they want to be, what they want to change in the world. So that's why I repeatedly talk about SDG goal uh, because with this SDG goal, we are actually talking about the real problem in the world. Right, the problem going back here. Um, so we are talking about the sustainable cities and communities. Millions of problems here. Peace and justice, life below water, clean energy, right? This is very close to you, right? How we do that and how we use the tool. So make your make the teaching and learning more authentic that is like a, the future to solve the problem that is the future it's not a, about ai but it is about how you uh, transform education um, in your university so that is the future okay uh, thank you very much dr yunis uh, i think uh, the time will be uh will be end uh, shortly uh, it's time to close this uh, webinar we actually honored that you have uh, come here we, that you are being one of our lecturer for this uh, huge class and we also hope that we will have other collaboration in the future dr yunis uh, definitely uh, thank you for your time uh, thank you for everything you you do for this uh, for this thing to be done. Uh, maybe that's all from us. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Paranga. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you, Miss. 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 Thank you for sharing this.